Hey everyone, welcome back to the Code Wolf. Today we're gonna jump right in and take a look at AZ Copy. So this is a great command line tool that can be used to upload and download files to your Azure Blob storage account and just manage the data in your storage account in general. It's a really useful tool that can also be used for scripting environments and a lot of other purposes. As a quick side note, please hit subscribe to support the channel. It really helps a lot. The channel's really growing and I'm excited about it. So to get started, there's two things you'll need. The first is an Azure storage account, obviously, and you don't have to do anything to it. Just create the account and you'll be good to go. I'm going to assume you have a general understanding of how to work with Azure storage if you're watching this. So we're gonna focus just on AZ copy. And that means the other prerequisite here is to actually download AZ copy. And you can do that by just searching Google for get started with AZ copy. And that'll take you to this landing page where you can download the app. So I'll download this and open that up. And you'll see this comes in a zip folder. So if we zoom in here, it should look something like this depending on your operating system. So from there, we can just say extract all. And I'm gonna browse, and I already have a folder set up called AZ copy. So I'm going to extract that there. And when that finishes, we'll have this extra folder in here. And you can see we have this azcopy.exe. This is the whole command line tool. So I'm actually gonna cut that out of this subdirectory and paste it back in the root here and just delete that extra folder. So now we have our azcopy.exe and I have a few other files and folders here that we'll be working with. Now, one side note, um, if I were to open up a command line window here, and if I run az copy, which is the keyword command for this tool, you can see it gives us a list of information and stuff. But remember, this is an exe, so that will only work from the folder where this currently lives. And then you'll have to run all your commands relative to this folder. Now, if you want this tool to be accessible from anywhere, you can just copy this path in your file explorer. And then if you search in your start menu for environment variables and open this systems property, we can then click environment variables here. And what you'll wanna do is find your path variable and say edit. And then down at the bottom here, just make sure you click the new button. And I've already added an entry here for az copy, just paste in the windows file path to that executable and that'll make it available from any window if that's what you're looking for or any command line window. But for now, I'm just gonna open up this directory in VS Code and this is where we'll be working with the tool. So in here, if I were to say az copy command again with the dash h for help, you can see that it lists out available commands and some flags and some other information. We're gonna be looking at these commands as we roll along here. So the first thing we have to do to really get this going is figure out how we wanna authenticate az copy to Azure. And there's really two ways to do that. One is to use Microsoft Entra ID, which used to be called Azure AD. And with that, you can use role-based access control where you assign a user account or an identity, a role, um, and permissions to manage data in your Blob Storage account. That's actually the ideal way to do it. Um, you can run AZ copy login and log in with a user that has those permissions set up, and then you won't have to pass along a security token or anything like that. Um, I'm not gonna cover how to do that in this video because there's a lot of variations to that potentially depending on your AD setup and stuff like that. Instead, we're gonna go with a more straightforward approach which is to use SAS tokens. So that's another way to authenticate to Azure Storage. So if we go back to our storage account here, um, you can actually create a SAS token by going down to shared access signature. And as long as you have permissions to create these tokens, this is pretty straightforward. SAS tokens essentially give users permissions to perform various actions on your storage account and different services within there. So in this case, we'll just select all of them and allow access to all resource type and all permissions. This is a pretty global SAS token, but these tokens have an expiration date and we can accept the default here. So I'll just say generate SAS token. And then down here we have this SAS token field. So this is essentially a security token that we can append to the end of all of our commands in AZ copy that will give us access to our storage account. Again, if you have Azure Active Directory and user accounts properly set up, you don't have to do this but this will work for anyone who has the token, so we're going with this. So I'm gonna copy that token out of here, and back in VS Code, let's add that to our notes file here. So here's our token. And the other thing we need is the base URL of our storage account so that the az copy command knows where it's actually trying to communicate. And you can find that under the endpoints in your settings. So if we look inside here, we're gonna be working with the blob service. Just look for the primary endpoint blob service. So I'll copy this and go back to Notepad. And let's put this at the beginning of our URL. 
So now we have our base URL um, with a security token or SAS token at the end of it. And the last thing I'm gonna add in here is a slash picks directory. So we're gonna have a blob container called picks. And so this will provide a direct URL to that container with our security token at the end of it. So this will serve as kind of the base URL for all of the operations we're gonna do with AZ copy. So down in our terminal, the first thing we have to do is actually create a container to store all the pictures we're gonna upload. Um, right now out in Azure, if we were to go to our storage browser and back to our containers, you can see right now there are no containers except for the default logs. So let's first create a container. And if we look at our list of commands, there's actually a command to do that called make, it says create a container or file share. That's the one we want. So let's say az copy make, and then let's make sure we grab this URL again and paste that in here. Now, because we're specifying this slash picks, that's actually gonna work for us. It's gonna, this command is gonna understand that that path is the uh, container that we want to create. And we already have our security token at the end that it'll use for us. So if we hit enter, it'll say successfully created the resource and back out in Azure, there's our picks container. And of course there's nothing in it right now, but we're gonna take care of that next. So in VS Code, let's look for another command that might help us move a bunch of our files up to blob storage. So we have them locally on our computer right now, let's push them up to the cloud. And a good command for that might be this copy. So this says copies source data to a destination location. And notice that it just says source and destination. It doesn't necessarily say local to cloud because you can also pull down from the cloud onto your local computer or even between cloud storage accounts. This just accepts a source and a destination, which is actually really cool. So let's say az copy and then say copy. And let's start with one file. So let's say pick slash pick one dot JPEG. And then make sure again, we get our base URL here. So this first path here, this is gonna be our source. And the second one is gonna be our destination. So I'm gonna paste that in. And let's hit enter. And that's gonna run a job here. And sure enough, now it says number of files transferred is one. And if we go back to Azure and refresh, there's our image file. It's really that easy. AZ copy is just a source and a target and security, and you're good to go. Now, what if we wanted to upload this entire directory? It's pretty uncommon that you would use a command line tool for just one file. Um, that's not really the purpose of it. You could just use the browser or something else for that. But let's say we have directories or recursive directories want to upload a lot of files. So in that case, we can actually just go back to our original command here that we just ran. And instead of specifying a file, we can just use the wildcard asterisk. And this is gonna say copy everything from the pics directory up to the pics folder out in Azure. So let's run this and you can see the jobs going again. And now it says the number of files transferred is four. Remember there's just one before, but now we have four. And it also copied the one that we originally already copied and just kind of replaced that. So now when we go back here, we refresh and there's four files. So awesome, we just uploaded our whole directory here. Now it's worth mentioning that if you leave off this wildcard, you can upload the directory itself, meaning it'll create a virtual directory in your container called picks. And then inside of that will be your files. But I'd like to keep things at the top level if I can with containers uh, for simple stuff like this. So we're going with this wildcard approach, but you don't actually have to use this um, unless you want to. Now we have our files up in Azure, but Let's look at the reverse of this. Let's say that we already have a container out in Azure and we have stuff stored in the cloud, but now we want it locally on our computer. We're pulling down stuff that we backed up. Well, to do that is super simple. We actually just have to reverse this command. So right now this is saying that our local directory is the source and the cloud is the target. But what if we delete this? And again, let's add our wildcard after here to get all our files. And then we can just say, bring all this down into our downloads folder. And so now again, the cloud is the source, downloads is the target, and we run this. And sure enough, you can see our four files already popped in. AZ copy is very performant. That's one of the best reasons to use it um, for batch processing like this, it's very fast. And now we have our four pictures locally. So we uploaded them, we downloaded them, all that good stuff is possible with AZ copy. Now let's look at one other scenario. So if I were to say AZ copy help again, dash H, remember that's your friend. Uh, let's look at some of the other ones here. So we could actually delete some files, which would be interesting. 
But one really cool feature is the sync command. This is the one that I want to look at. This will essentially allow you to still pass in a source and a target, but it'll make sure that the target ends up matching the source. So for example, if I were to drag in another picture here, so we've got link jumping in here. Uh, so now we have five pictures locally in our pix folder, but we only have four up in Azure. So let's see what happens when we run this sync command, um, or actually let's just kind of reuse one of these. Remember, you can always hit up on your keyboard to reuse a previous command. So we'll say az copy sync, and we're gonna say that we wanna sync our pix directory with the pix directory in Azure, and we don't have to use any of these wildcards for this. And then let's get rid of our downloads at the end from the previous command when we ran this, and then hit enter. And that's gonna run. And this one is interesting. Notice that it says file scanned at source is five, picks one through five here on the left, local machine. And then file scanned at destination is four. Remember Azure only had four of those files, but then it says number of copy transfers for files is one, completed one. So it figured out which file wasn't up in Azure and then it sent it up there for us. So now if we refresh this, give that a second and sure enough, there's our pick five. So it actually synced our directory. And of course we can do this the other way as well. So if we set the cloud as our source and downloads as our target, and then we run this command again, oh, there it is. You can see pick five is now in our downloads folder. Hopefully this gives you an idea of just how easy this workflow is. The copy command can do almost anything as long as you specify a source and a target and are authorized to do so either through a SAS token or through Azure AD. We'll look at some Azure AD content in a future video, but I really wanted to just focus on AZ copy here. But so quickly, we were able to just take this local folder, copy everything up to Azure, sync it all up, bring it all down again. You can do almost anything like this really quickly with AZ copy. It's an underrated tool. Use it in your scripting, use it for your batch jobs. It's a lot of fun to play around with. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit subscribe to support the channel, it means a lot. And I'll see you next time right here on the Code Wolf.